If you're like me and you've always wondered how Daily Dappy produce and edit their videos, then this tutorial is for you. Welcome guys, my name is Danny James and in today's video I'll be breaking down how to edit videos just like we see in Daily Dappy. This could potentially be a two to three part video segment which I'll start with covering the most basic of animations and then you can slowly morph into the more complex animations on the next tutorial so let's get into the video okay so for the first part of this series we'll be recreating this small segment that i did with sench i'm the guy that's applying the pressure that's why it's green lights on a diamond tester dm your bitch i bet she reply they put me in a lady book you in i'm the guy that's applying the pressure that's why it's green lights on a diamond tester dm your bitch i bet she reply they put me in a lady book you in leicester basically we'll follow the lyrics of the artist and then try to imagine what we can come up with in terms of ideas and images that you can incorporate i won't show you how to do each and every animation in here just because the techniques are more or less the same we are just working with keyframes and a few camera controls once we've done one or two of them i think you should be able to get the gist of everything else i'll start by duplicating this comp so that you can always come back to our original comp later on i will delete everything except the raw materials we have a soundtrack at the bottom and i've also locked that layer so that we don't mess with it i also have the performance scene with Sench. Right above it, I have a rotor selection of him, which I will explain later on in the tutorial. We currently just need to work with the first two layers. The first part of this animation, Sench starts by saying, I'm the guy that's applying the pressure. So it comes up to somewhere around here. And you can also bring a marker by dragging this, which means the animation should end somewhere here, which means that you can simply type, I'm the guy using our text tool with our initial text we'll go back to our effects and type in typewriter hit you so that you can see the two keyframes drag the keyframes closer to each other and now we'll have an animation that resembles a typewriter once again hold shift hit p add a position keyframe since this is our eventual result we can have that keyframe over here and then right on our left side we can have the text appear from the right side and now if we scroll through it comes in like this. I can push the second keyframe for the typewriter so that the text shows up like this. Put everything to easy ease. Now we just need to bring a PNG that shows a guy. In this example, I'll use this animation over here. I'll put it right above the text, bring the guy somewhere around here. Hit P, hold shift, hit T, add a keyframe for both of them. Push these keyframes to our right side. We'll need the position maybe for the guy to appear from bottom and then the opacity to also start at zero i would however encourage you to put the opacity keyframes closer to each other and then put everything to easy ease put the keyframes closer so that you get a fast paced transition so this is essentially what we'll be doing with other layers in this tutorial. Whatever comes in, you must make sure it also goes out in the same way. Right at the end of this animation, I will copy my last keyframe, Control C, Control V. I will also copy the first keyframe, Control C, Control V. And I will do the same with these opacity keyframes. So the guy pops in and then pops out. And you can do the same with these other texts once you're done Control shift d and delete everything that comes right after that finally what you need to do you need to toggle between switches and modes and add motion blur on those two texts and this is our first animation i'm the guy that's applying the press i'm the i'm the guy that's applying the press i'm the going to our second animation we were typing in the word applying the pressure like this i just created two text layers or the first one for applying the and then a second text layer for the words pressure and in this example i put the words pressure in a stroke instead of a fill using the characters tab and the animations are kind of the same if i hit you these are the animations that i added on the word applying the i did something different with the word pressure i added a character offset setting just to make the text you know trip a little bit and the way to do that if you had the words pressure to make the text appear that way just click on here and then find the animate button click on character offset add a keyframe for character offset move it to your, to your right and then adjust this value such that it will now appear like this so that's the only thing that i did different on these layers but first things first is that i created the text in this format 
knowing how it would appear eventually then made keyframes out of it. So after here he says He says that's why it's green lights on the diamond tester and it only makes sense to get a PNG over diamond tester and then I added a small text with the word green it only has a glow and a little bit of strobe light to have it flicking on and off on and off and then I also give the text a stroke which is in green so that it resembles the same concept. Now we'll go into our third animation and the second last animation that happens in this sequence. He says, DM your bitch and I bet she'll reply. I created a text box and placed some text inside. I'll create a dummy one right over here and I will disable these other layers. Find a pen tool, draw a casual text box, make it look like an, a real message box to follow the same movements that I'm doing. And then you can go back with your pen tool to adjust these corners. Convert the corners into curves by holding Alt and then clicking on it. So now we'll have this little curve here and make sure it's the same, the same thing is happening on each corner to make it realistic. Give it whatever color that you need. Find your text tool and then write a DM that you'll typically write. All right, so that's our typical text box and then also add a time so that it's more realistic. Chop these two layers so that they start at the right place. This is our eventual result. Now we just need to add a glow on the text box layer, change the settings for threshold, intensity and size and make sure to add a drop shadow on the shape layer itself. If I toggle transparency, we need a small shadow on the text box that looks something like that. I'll re enable everything else. So once you have something that, like this, make sure to go on each text layer and add the typewriter effect and animate them in the same way that I showed you with the other text so that it appears like a real text. So once you're done with all these settings, just pre-comp everything. So that's what it will typically look like. And then you should add position and opacity keyframes as I showed you in my earlier example. Now, the only thing that you'll also need to do in many other animations is that when you go to your position keyframes, hold Alt and click on the stopwatch, add a wiggle expression use these values 3 and 30 and what that does is that it will add a wiggling animation on that text box yeah something like that so i won't go on to show you how to do the opacity and position keyframes as i showed you in the other examples i will just show you what i did with this model over here i put a reply on the left side instead of the right side which just makes more sense and then i also had the model coming up in the same way that i showed you after i added the position and opacity keyframes for the model i hit r and then i added a wiggle expression on the rotation stopwatch with the same dimensions just to make it rotate like that so i think you basically get the gist of everything that i did in this beginner's version going into the last animation we had a skyline of la and brought in a badge from leicester since i watch football so he was saying they book you in la and they book me in leicester this was the original image that i got online i just went with it on photoshop used the selection tool to cut out the building and the ground like this this was our final result i did the same thing here and as always put a glow on each and every animation that you do before i go into our last section of this tutorial which will be creating the camera controls i want to show you something make sure you have a roto selection of your subject which i did before i began this tutorial make sure you pre-comp it first and then hit ok so for this segment that uh, comes in with the applying the pressure part control shift d on each side put that little selection above the text so you can see the text pops up underneath him which is something that i've seen in most of daily Duppy's videos and you can keep on doing the same with other selections this will add some attention to detail as you can see the model here in the png bounces around but right behind the subject now i'll move into the most interesting part of this tutorial which is creating the camera controls Assuming you've all understood basic principles behind all these animations, this is what everything that we've worked on looks like without the camera controls. I'll create a new adjustment layer 
go to your effects and look for a transform add a keyframe for position and scale hit you so that you can see those keyframes so with our first keyframes we'll just scroll until we see the first animations coming in move these keyframes there then as soon as we see some initial movement zoom in by scaling into up to 120 move the parameters for position to focus on that upper right area of the screen and then we can zoom out into our initial picture but before we do that make sure you've copied your previous keyframes now move one or two frames and then click on reset here so our animation moves in like this and then moves out like this and then you can now zoom into it again focus on the area that has the text that we've been looking at so once everything comes in like this copy our previous keyframes put them there we can reset once again so that it goes back to the default then we can once again zoom into the tester and so on and so on make sure you put these keyframes on easy ease and then last but not least change the shutter angle from using the default composition put your own I would put a high value up to about 300 so that we have significant motion blur on this animation. So, so far, this is what it looks like. I'm the guy that's applying the pressure, that's why I speed. I'm the guy that's applying the pressure, that's why I speed. As you've seen, these few keyframes add a whole new layer of dynamic feeling into this sequence. I'll go on a little bit. We can now focus on this tester, zoom into it by scaling, and then move our position keyframes to focus on it. Now, before they disappear out of the frame, copy the previous keyframes, Ctrl C, Ctrl V, and then you can zoom out by hitting reset, and then you can go into the next animation. Now, for the text, I will wait for the text before it slides in. Copy our previous keyframes, and then you can now zoom into it, 120, and adjust the X and Y axis. The response comes on the left-hand side of the screen, which means we need to copy our previous keyframes before we go into that other side. Otherwise, it will be a little bit scrappy. So we now shift on to this other side. Uh, we're gonna maintain the same scaling. So manually add that keyframe before they pop out. We need to copy our last keyframes once again. Control C, Control V, and then one, two keyframes later, reset their values. And I will play this little animation from the top. I'm the guy that's applying the pressure, that's why it's green lights on a diamond tester. DM your bitch, I bet she replied it. I'm the guy that's applying the pressure, that's why it's green lights on a diamond tester. You can see so much difference in that. I've only spotted one little error and it's because I've done what I was telling you all along not to do. From these keyframes to these keyframes, we need to copy our previous keyframes so that that animation stays there before it tries moving out or moving away. So I'll delete these ones and then I think we are resetting. Yeah. So I'll play this from the top. I'm the guy that's applying the pressure, that's why it's green lights on a diamond tester. DM your bitch, I bet she replied it. I'm the guy that's applying the pressure, that's why it's green lights on a diamond tester. DM your bitch, I bet she replied it. I'm the guy that's applying. I think that's it. I'll go on till the end for this animation. And this is our final result after all has been said and done. I'm the guy that's applying the pressure, that's why it's green lights on a diamond, diamond tester. Huh? DM your bitch, I bet she reply, they put me in a lady. They put me in Leicester. I'm the guy that's applying the pressure, that's why it's green lights on a diamond tester. DM your bitch, I bet she reply, they put me in a lady. They put me in Leicester. And yeah, that's how to create these daily dappy kind of edits. I hope you did genuinely enjoy this as much as I did prepping it for you. I will also have the project file for this tutorial available below in case you want to follow the small details that go into creating such a sequence. My name is Danny James. See you guys on the next tutorial.